The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. In the four gospels, the first thing that is common in the four gospel is that number one, they made us read the Bible backwards. The four Gospels made us read the Bible backwards. Matthew started with the generation, Genesis. Mark starts with the beginning, Genesis. J I mean, Luke took us beginning at Moses, Genesis. John tells us in the beginning, Genesis. So all of us, all of them make us read the Bible backwards. That's number one. Number two, did the four Gospels introduce Jesus as God? Huh? Did they introduce Jesus as God? All of them? Okay, did they also introduce Jesus as man? Yes, okay, now. So let's get to the core. What else is common in the four Gospels? We have seen that the four Gospels have common things. Number one, they make us read the Bible backwards. Number two, they reveal Jesus as God. Number three, they reveal Jesus as man. Matthew 28, verse 19. Matthew 28, Verse 19. Read for me, PJ. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Somebody shout all nations. Can you shout it? Let the radio audience hear you. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. Mark chapter 16 verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world. Is that similar to all nations? Yes. And preach the gospel to every creature. Luke 24, 47. Luke chapter 24, verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Is that similar to all nations? Is that similar to every creature? All right, good. John 20, 23. John chapter 20, verse 23. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. The remission of sin, is that also through preaching? Through preaching? Yes. So which means something that is similar in the four gospels. Number one is Jesus as God and Jesus as man. Jesus as God and Jesus as man. Number two, Jesus introduced from the Old Testament. Jesus introduced from the Old Testament. But obviously, Jesus gave a commandment. He gave a responsibility to his disciples. He gave a commandment. He gave a responsibility to his disciples. Let's track something back. Matthew 28, verse number 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 20. Read for me. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Teaching them what things soever I have commanded you. Question, where did he command them? Luke 24, 44. These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you. So when Jesus said, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you, which means, therefore, whatever he told his disciples that became the apostles to do in the four gospels was still their responsibility when he rose from the dead. Whatever he told them in the four gospels was still their responsibility when he rose from the dead. These are the words which I told you before. I have not changed my mind. Now Matthew 28 verse 19 again. Matthew 28 verse 19. Matthew 28 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. 
The word teach all nations, there is the word multitude. Go and make disciples. Go and turn men into students. Go and turn men into students. Make disciples. That's the commission. The word disciple simply means an intern. Let me simplify because it's going to be a very critical part of this series. Doctors, medical doctors, and I'm glad some of them are here. In fact, Dr. Gabriel is right in front of me. So Dr. Gabriel better be confirming if I say the right things now. Because I'm not a medical doctor. <laughs> uh, somebody said he's a doctor. They asked him, what did you read in school? He said, he read agriculture and English. He said, yes, you are a native doctor. <laughs> agriculture for herbs, English for communication. <laughs> Doctors go to medical school, right? They go to medical school, right? Okay. And no matter how they read and practice in medical school, in fact, Dr. Martin, one of the medical doctors, you know, in church here, was telling me some time ago, we we're just talking about the field of medicine and all that. And he said to me, when you go to school to, to read medical science, or, you know, yeah, to read medical science, you begin to experiment on a dead body. They will take you to a dead body, and they start teaching you human anatomy using a dead body. So you will be working with a dead body for a long time. The bones, the sex skeletons, the skin, you will use the human, I mean the human body. You do a lot of work on it. All right? Now, so you keep learning both by practice and by lectures. When you graduate from medical school, you now go for housemanship. Is that right? Housemanship is where a junior doctor will work under senior doctors in a teaching hospital. All right? And they will take you with them to do ward rounds. And when they do ward rounds, they will look at critical cases and they will ask the interns, what do you think is wrong here? What should you have done here? Now they are making you face real life situation. You are no more talking to dead bodies. This is a human being that have to live. And then they take you through housemanship. In the process of that, the lectures in class, all the things you did in class, now you are developing confidence in confronting real life issues. That is where the real practice of medical science begins. Everything you did in class was not enough. You have to be trained under a trusted expert to help bring into fruitation the things you learned in class. Now you develop confidence. Now you develop more skills. Now you are able to deal with cases. Now your senior doctor will not be around. And you will confront cases. You will diagnose and treat. When it comes, you will supervise what you did. If there's something you didn't do right, he will correct you. If there's something you did inefficient, he will show you what to do to be efficient. So that tomorrow when you face that case, you now can give it full attention by experience. Am I communicating at all? So when a medical doctor graduates without housemanship, his medical science is not complete. There is that practice that is critical in medical science. That means there's a huge difference between what you learn in Bible study and what you learn in discipleship. There's a huge difference between what you learn in Bible study and what you learn in discipleship. Discipleship is a practical hands-on experience. Discipleship is a practical hands-on experience. It's not the same thing as Bible study. Discipleship is not the same thing as Bible study. It's a practical hands-on experience. You are not a disciple just because you study my books. That's part of it. It's a practical everyday experience. Discipleship is a practical everyday experience. Where you are with your disciple, 
he is confronted with a life situation and you tell him how to approach it he approaches and overcomes he grows in confidence he grows in experience you go for evangelism with him he sees how you answer questions he sees how you handle people that are skeptical he sees how you handle people that will insult you he sees how you handle people that refuse to open their gate and they stand on the other side of their gate and say what do you have to say they see how you you are able to convince them to open the gate for you to teach you go for discipleship somebody is critically sick i mean for evangelism with your disciple your disciple will see how you entered whether when, when you entered you prayed or you did teaching first whether you heal the person first before you taught, your disciple will be there watching and learning. And sometimes you will ask your disciple, pray for this person, sick person. And when he finished praying for him, you will tell him, make him walk. And your disciple will help him, help him from the bed and lift him up. And in your presence, take steps of helping the person walk until the person walks. He is learning on the job challenges come medically challenges come financially you advise him on what to do to confront life issues discipleship is not just sitting down and writing greek and hebrew words it's part of it but it goes far beyond that discipleship is the practice of ministry the practice of ministry and you cannot grow in ministerial depth and experience if you avoid activities of ministry if you avoid activities of ministry activities of ministry like going for evangelism where rain is beating you rain is falling and you are still going your clothes are soaked your shoes are soaked you are still going for evangelism i have done crusade open under the open skies big crusade with rainfall sound system went off i used my physical voice to preach not five not ten times that's why people like me were so rugged any condition you put us we do ministry as if there was no condition because we've grown by experience ministry is experience ministry is not theory ministry is experience so if you are avoiding the practice of ministry you can never mature and you can never do ministry well so discipleship includes teaching but it's not only teaching making disciples isn't just teaching in matthew chapter 28 verse 20 read for me matthew 28 verse 20 teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus told them to go and teach. And he will be with them to the end of the world. But look at Mark chapter 3 verse 14. The book of Mark chapter 3 verse 14. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. That they should be with him first that he may send them forth so two dimensions discipleship is the art of being with your discipler and being with him in the practice of ministry in the practice of ministry i have some disciples in power city are always with me dr gabriel is one pastor philemon is one pastor matthew is one i travel with them and when we travel we confront situations apostle prince is one a lot of you here when we travel we confront situations and i will tell them what to do do like this do like that don't do it like this oh don't go about it like that we are together i can't be saying to them don't do it like that in their houses a disciple must be where the discipler is everywhere jesus was his disciples were with him because discipleship is practice discipleship is practical discipleship is practical it's beyond teaching teaching is part of it but it goes beyond that 
it goes into the practice of ministry. So look at the sequence. To be with him and that he might send them to preach. So there is the experiential part of discipleship. The experiential part of discipleship. Look, we are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.